Well, good afternoon, all you Black Pearl Voyager followers. It's a somewhat sunny day here in uh, Oregon, early in January, but at least it's not raining. Um, I'm Ted. Welcome to the Black Pearl Voyager channel. And you're probably wondering what this video is about. Well, I'll tell you. Um, I watch a lot of you guys on YouTube. I watch uh, a lot of uh, overlanding videos and some of you guys with your photos and your videos are just cinematically outstanding and uh, I really appreciate that. Um, however, most of you are pretty tight-lipped about what kind of camera equipment you're using. Um, it's easy after a while of watching to discern how you're capturing your shots, but it's always been of interest to me um, what people are using as camera equipment. Now, I've tried emailing and instant messaging a few of you out there, and you know, uh, if you got a busy channel, uh, I understand you're probably not likely to answer. So, in a preemptive strike, <laughs> I thought that I would present this video here about some of the camera equipment I'm using. And just so you know, um, I've got a new piece of gear here that I think you might be interested in. However, in the meantime, I was going to go over um, some of the equipment that I'm using and how I kind of got rolling in, uh, the, on the channel. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos at all, some of my earlier ones, I think my earliest one was a video that I posted and it was after I purchased what I thought I would need for um, a video channel like this and that is a sports cam of some sort, um, like a GoPro. And I thought, man, if I just had a GoPro camera I'd be home free. Well, um, I did a lot of research. Didn't want to spend a lot of money because I wasn't sure if I was going to even pursue this at all. Um, but uh, I did a lot of research. Didn't want to spend a lot of money. So um, I settled for, or actually, uh, well, actually I purchased the Acaso Brave 7 LE. Now, if it looks familiar, it's because it's a knockoff of the DJI Osmo, which has the uh, the front forward facing screen. I thought that that would be handy to have, especially for someone who's vlogging and holding the camera at arm's length. And it does work for that. It has some limitations though. Uh, this is not a Brave, or this is not the GoPro um, uh, Hero 7 or 8. It does not have the superior uh, image stabilization that those do, although it has, uh, it does have image stabilization and it's fairly good. Um, but it shoots nothing but JPEG. You can't shoot anything raw with it. So there's no after the fact uh, imaging uh, processing really much that you can do. Um, it shoots 1080p. It shoots 4K. Uh, and I wasn't displeased with the video quality. As a matter of fact, I'm going to keep using it. Uh, this camera will occupy a spot um, on the grill of the, cam of the uh, Gladiator. And occasionally I will mount it upside down um, on the underside of the driver's side mirror, I believe, to get some of those cool shots of facing forward the road, catching the wheels, the tires going over rocks and through mud, that kind of thing. And it's easy enough just to flip it around and catch some going scenes. Um, yes, it's, it's good for that. And up until just recently, as a matter of fact, this will be the first video that uh, I present that is shot entirely all, entirely on a new piece of gear. So... When I bought that camera, I also picked up this Ulanzi um, tripod here. It has the flexible uh, legs. 
it has a ball head and it also has this uh, rather cool feature here that not only is it a tripod but it also doubles as a cell phone camera mount. Um, I've also purchased the Ulanzi quick uh, connect disconnect uh, for um, uh, for this tripod and the one I'm using now uh, that I've so that I can transfer this new piece of gear uh, that I'm recording on now onto this when I need something a little smaller something a little more easier to handhold. Now I bought this Cherry tripod um, back in 1974. Um, I was on my way to Korea, I was flying through Japan, we landed at Tokyo. I'm lugging around my Canon FTB, that should tell you how old, well how long ago that was. And uh, I picked up this Cherry tripod. And uh, it's small, it's light, but it's really sturdy. And probably the, my most favorite feature about this particular tripod is the fact that the handle, pan and tilt handle, um, controls both. Uh, you loosen it and you can pan and tilt and you tighten it and everything's done, snug down tight. Now, I've got this Carson um, tripod. Uh, it's probably a little nicer depending on what you like. Um, I like the Cherry because uh, I can independently, I'm not forced to uh, have all the legs uh, extend. Um, they can be extended individually. I could use it as a, monopo a monopod and you can do that with this too. But what I dislike about this is you have one thing for pan and then you have to loosen this, to, or to pan, and then you have to loosen this to tilt. And um, it's kind of plastic, and it's just, I don't know, it's okay. But uh, I would rather have huh, the smaller, lighter, all-metal cherry. This also had a feature that allows you to tilt the tabletop. Anyway... If you've watched any of my other videos, um, you'll see some uh, scenes where it's my wife and I in the front of the truck or scenes from out the front window. That's all done with the Pixel 4 XL. Um, this is the 5G model. Um, and when I first bought the Pixel camera, I bought the Pixel XL when it first came out. And I gotta tell you, that had the best camera I'd had since my FTB. No kidding. I've had several smaller handhelds from Sony, from Panasonic, um, and they were all point and shoot type cameras. Um, and these Pixel telephones the cameras blow all those away and come very close to this new piece of gear here uh, that I'm using right now. These shoot excellent, excellent pictures and excellent video also. And you just hit record and there's no settings. Uh, there's not much you can do. Very little in the way of a decent telephoto on it and so they have their limitations too so while this is in the grill or outside exterior i will be using my two canon pixels um, on the uh, 67 designs mount on the dash uh, one i use for uh, navigation and my ham radio because it's app controlled and the other one <clears throat> will be for shooting videos both forward and facing back. So, what am I using now? Well, right now, this is going to be my primary B-roll camera, I guess is what you could say. Um, 
Uh, when I hop out of the truck, I don't want to pull all this stuff down off of the dashboard and have to realign everything. I'll be grabbing this. When we get to camp and I need to set up a tripod and uh, do some um, cooking, this will be the camera that I will use. Um, when I do a drive-by, I will probably plant this camera, do the drive-by, and retrieve it. Uh, that leaves all this stuff that I've got mounted somewhere, mounted, and it allows me to um, have uh, this extra piece of gear for everything else. So, what is it? When are you going to get to it? <laughs> right now, I will tell you that this is the Canon M50. Now, since I couldn't get any information from you guys about what you're using, I decided that uh, I'd start doing some serious investigation. And I do a lot of my, almost all my best investigation uh, on YouTube. So I appreciate all you providers or all you uh, uh, creators out there that uh, take the time to do these videos because... It's been invaluable to me, especially when it comes to picking out this kind of item here, this video camera. Okay, so moving right along. <clears throat> um, I did watch reviews and tutorials on all kinds of cameras in all kinds of price ranges. I'm not a big spender. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this even a year from now, so... I can't see spending twelve, fourteen, two thousand dollars on a camera and a bunch of lenses and stuff like that. So I looked on the lower end for something mirrorless because they're light and um, very flexible, something with interchangeable lenses. And so that narrowed the field quite a bit. And when you get below the six hundred dollar mark, and actually this camera retails for quite a bit more than $600, some $700 in some places. I'm a real cheapskate, so I actually bought one on Amazon that was renewed. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, uh, when it arrived, it came in a generic box. It was packed professionally, and it looks absolutely new. There's not a scratch or mark on it. It seems to work flawlessly. It included the lens and the charger and everything a new one came with for about 90 bucks less. So um, I'm under $600 on this particular camera and lens. Um, I didn't stop there though. Um, one of the other drawbacks to the, this type of camera here <clears throat> is um, that uh, uh, unless you spend twice or twice and a half as much as I did on this one you're not going to get an external audio and I'll tell you what even with my little dead cat here that I managed to find uh, the audio on this sucks and if you get much more than three or four feet away forget it you're not going to hear a thing so um, I did some more YouTube research and um, I found on the internet or on um, on YouTube and at Amazon this uh, Saren T mic with uh, the dual dead cats. Now this is a shotgun mic that um, has uh, mics facing forward and backward. Uh, it can be set to be used. You can use this with um, a cell phone or a camera. The Canon M50 has the audio, external audio, and so I couldn't resist. Um, this camera picks up as well from behind the camera as it does to the front, and uh, that's what really attracted me to it. Uh, it comes with some pre-installed foam um, wind breakers, probably a pop, uh, pop filters, and then you can remove those in favor of the included dual dead cats like you see here so here's the entire setup uh, this is the camera tripod quick disconnect lens and microphone um, as you see it 
with the screen in the forward position, which is perfect for vlogging, um, what you'll notice is that there's also a viewfinder with an OLED um, screen uh, that is real time. So whatever you see and whatever you're doing on the included touch screen for the M50, you can see inside and it's got a really nice diopter. I can take my glasses off and I can focus that diopter so I can get the camera right up to my face. And with the screen flipped out, I can actually drag my autofocus square wherever I need it while I'm looking through the viewfinder and also change the ISO, the time value, shutter speed, um, or the f-stop. So this is really a cool camera. I'm not into it a lot and I think it's going to work out great. Uh, one of the things you'll notice you probably noticed it right away was the fantastic video quality out of this thing. Uh, right now I'm shooting uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second. It will do 4K but there's a quite a large crop factor uh, and that will work fine um, if I need to uh, bring up uh, some subjects uh, you know closer uh, so it's a kind of a pseudo telephoto uh, it could provide that um, not only that but this camera has all kinds of scene settings there's a setting where you can go in and set the scene for um, uh, you can do it black and white you can make it look watercolored you can make it uh, lots of little things like that that a novice camera operator might appreciate and shoot I might even use it myself and then there are settings for things like portraits or uh, soft focus um, you can do uh, landscapes that make the colors pop um, it's it's completely automatic and it's completely manual too and right now I'm shooting in manual settings um, <clears throat> Your shutter speed should ideally be twice your frame rate, so since I'm shooting at uh, 24 frames per second, uh, my shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. Um, then I can set the f-stop so that um, I get the maximum or minimum depth of field, and then it just has to set the proper ISO, and you have complete creative control, complete exposure control. I mean, this is really a very nice camera. For not a lot of money. So every once in a while you might notice that my attention's being drawn away and there's a good reason for that. First of all I got some cue cards up on my closet here so I can remember what to talk about. I guarantee you even with those there'll be some outtakes. But the Canon M50 also has a very excellent Wi-Fi connected app and I can control everything from this app in either photo mode or video mode. I can change the shutter speed, ISO, I can even adjust my audio all right here from this app. Um, right now I can refocus by touching the screen just by simply touching the screen, I've uh, focused on that uh, on that blue lit sign back there, and then with a touch of the screen, I can uh, refocus right back on me. And uh, it does have face tracking and eye tracking, so that will come in handy. Won't ever have to worry about focus. The image stabilizer is both in body and part of the lens. The M lenses uh, do have image stabilization. Uh, there's just nothing not to like about the Canon M50. So anyway, I could go on and on uh, about this camera. Uh, I'm not going to bore you anymore with anything. Just to let you know that uh, there is some really fine equipment out there. Okay, so just some things up. Um, this camera has uh, 24 megapixels. It shoots 4K at 24 frames. And uh, it actually will do also 
720p at 120 frames per second. So it needs a little bit of clarity there, but it will do uh, some pretty good slow motion stuff. It is limited to 720p there. External mic jack, a host of lenses that you can add, audio input for an external mic. There's really nothing that I can say bad about this M50 yet. I'm sure as I get to use it, I'll probably find more limitations for it. But for now, at this price point, uh, with the Canon quality, um, I can't really say anything negative about it. Okay, well, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, there's no downside to it. Um, I'm not monetized. I'm not going to try to make a fortune on my videos. They are as much of a uh, video journal for my children and grandchildren as they are entertainment for you. So if you find uh, anything uh, good to say about it or even bad to say about them, um, let me know. Uh, I'll try to get back with you in the comments section and uh, maybe you can live a little vicariously through me like uh, I do through a lot of other video creators like yourselves. So like and subscribe and check back with us later. Black Pearl Voyager is the channel. I'm Ted and next time we'll have Monica on too. And speaking of Monica, I couldn't complete this new gear review without mentioning her choices too. She's been into photography for many years now and her Pentex camera that she has currently is um, photo only. It is a mirrored or a DSLR they call them, a digital single lens reflex with a mirror. She prefers that. And uh, she's got plenty of Pentex lenses, so she upgraded to the Pentex KP. And this shoots some fine video too. She's got a bunch of lenses for it. Huge amount of flexibility. It's a little heavier than the M50. Does have multiple grips so that you can pick one that fits right. And this fits my hand pretty well. So, be looking for some content from her too. Catch you later.